Well, welcome, Capital Beach Church Faith family, to another podcast. The place that we get to hang out, talk about random stuff, and go deep on other things, and even recap past sermons or answer questions that you've written in about. Again, always, you can write in at mattw at capochurch.com. That's for those listening on any podcasting platform, as well as any of you watching on YouTube. Please, write me with any questions. I'm already formulating some new episodes that I think will address a lot of things that you're concerned about. We didn't do one last week. Surprise! You might have noticed that. Uh, I had the opportunity to travel back to Hawaii and spend time with uh, one of my closest friends for his 50th birthday. And uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute, but I got to be there and um, we did a bunch of things that I'll address, but I, I, I'll do it right now. Essentially, uh, for his 50th, he wanted his best friends to come hang out in Hawaii, work out together, read the Bible together. He kicked his wife and his kids out of the house. We had their whole house to ourselves to kind of do a man camp. And we actually uh, walked through um, a lot of just fitness, ice baths, confession, talking about what we wanted our families to be like, Um, the ways to be better godly men with our friends, with our families. Uh, It was an awesome time. And uh, and out of that, uh, it looks like we'll be maybe creating some kind of man camp that I'll travel around and um, we'll be doing them together. So that's where I was. Uh, I wasn't just laying on a beach. I was getting extremely sore, doing hundreds of burpees to the almost to the point of barfing my brains out. If you know what a burpee is, you know what I mean. If you don't know what a burpee, burpee is, well, don't ever ask someone because you don't ever want to do one. Trust me, you never want to do burpee. <laughs> uh, this podcast, I have a couple of things I want to talk about. The first one, believe it or not, I want to address, and I've not been paid to, nor is this podcast sponsored by The Batman. I need to talk about the newest Batman just just briefly, just, just, a, just a little bit. L- let me start with this. I am not a Robert Pattinson fan. Is that even how you say his name? The super frail, wide-jawed, weird-eyed vampire from Twilight. I've never been a fan of the guy. I remember when Twilight came out, it was the rage. I want to say, and not to kind of call my wife out, but I want to say she might have read all those books when they first came out. I might have sat through the movies. But when Batman was coming out, I was a massive Christopher Nolan fan. Huge, um, gosh, Christian Bale fan. And the Dark Knight, in my mind, was the best Batman to ever exist in the history of making of Batmans until the Batman just came out. And I'm telling you, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was a bit of, I don't know, like romance because kind of the theme song for Batman was one of my favorite songs from the band Nirvana. Uh, I don't know if it's the fact that identified this Batman because it was like the only Batman that you'll see where he's like a tortured recluse rock star. Not that I would ever consider myself a rock star. That's not the part I connect with, but the internal torturedness I kind of connect with. Uh, I just loved it. There was very little Bruce Wayne in the whole of the movie. It was all Batman. And what I loved about it was Batman got his butt kicked so much because that's the part we forget about Batman, right? He's not a superhero. He's just rich. And that's not a superpower. I mean, I'd like that superpower maybe a little bit, but that's not a superpower. So he's super rich, going out there, trying to stop vigilantes, calling himself vengeance. And it would make sense that if he's a normal guy wearing a ton of rubber and plastic, I mean, I can barely surf in the winter wearing a wetsuit, let alone put on a Batman costume and beat people up. I I just can't even imagine. So clearly what we see in the film is this Batman is actually human. He gets his butt kicked repeatedly, almost gets taken out a couple different times. It was awesome. It was just the shots were amazing. The action with the music, um, the way they had the Batmobile was the most kind of gritty, earthy Batmobile ever. The motorcycle he drove was kind of like a motorcycle you could buy and just kind of make customizations to. He didn't have a lot of like creative uh, weaponry. It was just like dirty old Batman. Even his suit looked like he made it out of like stuff that he got at Lowe's. 
there was even scenes when he's walking, you can hear his rubber boots squeaking on the ground, like because they like look like they're Walmart boots. Like it was awesome. I'm not trying to encourage you to watch violent movies, but if you're okay watching them, you gotta see the new Batman. Don't let you know tiny little frail weirdo looking Robert Pattinson throw you off from seeing it. I promise, I think you'll be pleasantly pleased and you'll find it extremely entertaining. Not only that, it has a lot of cultural messages through it. Some of it is a little too woke for me, but I'm like, man, whatever, they're gonna throw it in. This is Hollywood, 2022, 2020, 2022, this is the scene. Everyone feels like they gotta be woke. But overall, what I loved about it was it was Batman as a person who was struggling his mental health acknowledged that was the reason for what he did and then sought to find a better way to be Batman. Loved it. Check it out. It's a very long film. Make sure you wear sweatpants and a very comfortable shirt because you're going to be sitting there for almost three hours to watch the whole film. And if you hate it, we're not friends anymore. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I know some of you aren't going to like it, but I think you should check it out. Well, while I was on Hawaii... A couple things came to mind that I thought I wanted to share with you. And and I apologize ahead of time because the next several minutes or so, uh, I want to talk about masculinity and I want to talk about this rise of toxic masculinity and how in many ways this desire to stand against toxic masculinity, the enemy has used to strip all masculinity away from men. And I think it's sad because I do think while toxic masculinity has created a bunch of terrible things, I mean, you might have just read Christianity Today. Here's the irony of this one. I don't know if you know, but there's a very popular podcast that came out called The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. It was published by Christianity Today. It was huge, probably one of the most downloaded podcast um, series ever in Christianity. And it was essentially the story of Mark Driscoll and the rise and fall of his ministry. And they essentially kind of built the whole thing around this toxic masculinity kind of embodied in Mark Driscoll is what made the whole thing crumble and why it's so bad and why Mark doesn't deserve grace and we should just pick up this past and put it out in front of everyone again and beat him up again. And there's several friends of mine who kind of wrote into the guy who wrote it and was like, hey, this is kind of um, what some might call failure porn where we just like to be addicted to other people's failures and it would appear that you're kind of tapping into our desire to celebrate successful people's falling and man i mean the guy's still preaching down in arizona you know why don't we just give this guy a break like let the grace of god work in his life like after all he essentially lost his whole ministry just because people thought he was a big jerk he never he never failed um in in moral in immorality he was faithful to his wife he just essentially was a jerk which i would attest to as well and lost his whole ministry because of that great lesson to all of us you know he's got a lot of rebuilding to do a lot of healing for his family. But of course, you know, the sexy thing is people's failures in Christianity. So they made a podcast and it got huge. And this podcast ironically was funded and promoted and sponsored by Christianity Today, who just came out recently as of four days ago, announced that two of their executives were accused of sexual allegations with their staff. So I wrote the guy that made that podcast and said so are you going to do a new podcast the rise and fall of christianity today of course they're not going to do that because they paid his bills but it's just so sad because as a church we know people blow it they make mistakes we should stand for the things that are true but man like if somebody blew it bad can you i mean can you imagine i, I was never a mark driscoll fan personally i just his steep pitching style was great but his his attitude i just I, I thought a lot of it was inappropriate. But could you imagine like going through all that, building this ministry, basically overnight losing it all because you were essentially a jerk, and then people throwing bricks through your windows, threatening your life. Like, I mean, come on. I mean, that's that was pretty bad. I mean, he left his whole family community, and that's family. He left 
his community and his friends and moved or had to move to a different state, you know, and he's trying to be obedient to God and still preaching. And I think he still has the ability to preach and he was very repentant. And I'm sure there'll be some residue in the other church where he's still learning. We're all in process, but man, we shouldn't celebrate our failures. Gosh, please. I wouldn't want my failure celebrated like that. Anyways, toxic masculinity. Essentially, that's how I got in this topic. And I think what we've happened is as men, and I would say probably for those younger, there's such a fear of stepping into toxic masculinity that we are even scared to be masculine at the fear that that might put down femininity or for the fear that we might appear too masculine and not being toxic. And that's probably the biggest lie that the enemy's ever sold any of us. Because in the end of the day, we need femininity and masculinity represented in the world because as humans, we are made in God's image. And in God, in his nature, he is both feminine and masculine. Now, I don't want to say that men all have to be a certain level of masculinity, just like I don't think women have to be a certain level of femininity. There's lots of women that exemplify some masculine tendencies and how they are wired, and there's lots of men who exemplify some feminine tendencies. I don't think that determines their gender. I think that just determines how they're wired, that men can lean towards being more sensitive and women can lean towards being more you know, masculine, and that doesn't have to affect that they're either one gender or the other because we've made these categories so far apart. But the worst thing we can do is begin to say that all masculinity is toxic. And so I've been doing a lot of thinking on like, what is it that men should grow in? um, And what are the things that we should be conscious of as men, as Christian men in our current time? Or what are some pillars of our biblical manhood, regardless of, our desire to maybe hunt or our desire to paint because those are two things usually put in masculine and feminine categories. Regardless of that, that's just hobbies or things we enjoy. Regardless of that, as men, what are some things we should be conscious of um, in our lives? And so uh, I kind of read a bunch of books. No, sorry, I didn't read a bunch of books. I, I read like cliff notes of some different books. Um, I listened to some podcasts Um, spoke with some friends. And these are four things that I came up with. So I'm just going to throw them on this podcast. I think all men should desire to have a curious faith. Um, I feel like church does a disservice to, and for the sake of terms, to young boys in kids' church. Because children's church oftentimes runs itself in a way that most young girls can thrive in because most young women have the ability to focus on specific tasks and pay attention where most boys are just like, you know, our hormones are wild. We want to like climb, 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 compete, 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 compete. And so I've seen this in my own son that he'll rather come sit in Sunday service and hear me preach. I mean, of all people's dad, who's got to, he's got to hear my voice all the time. He'd rather go there than go to kids' church because kids' church isn't really wired for him. But my daughter will come to kids. She'd go to all three services on Sunday and attend kids' church every single time if she could because she loves the crafts. She loves the emotional connection. She loves sitting and the and the learning. But my son just isn't wired the same way. And so I thought, man, isn't it sad that for most of us that grew up in the church, we were sit in chairs at classes where we had to focus on doing things. We hate it. Like, I'd like to light the glue on fire but I don't want to take glue and popsicle sticks and make sheep again. Like as a kid, I remember like it was the worst thing. So what ended up happening, I think for a lot of young men is as young as kids church, we got a distaste in our mouth for faith because it wasn't a faith that was curious. We weren't asking questions. We couldn't like move or do anything. We just had to sit, listen and learn the story. But a lot of young boys are like, I don't know. Like how do you fit that many animals on a boat? Are you sure? Everyone else died. Like these are things that little young boys oftentimes are always wondering about because the many young boys are very curious minds, and and all children are, but there's definitely a lean more for young boys. 
And so I wonder if sometimes we lost our kids before they even got started. So it's made me think for our church, you know, so Rod and I got together and not him and I, but as a pastors were meeting and I threw the idea by him and he thought, yeah, what if we created like two tracks in kids church? One, you know, wasn't about boy or girl, but it was more about interest. One was like shooting arrows into a target. And when you missed it, then we talked about what sin was while the other one was creating a coloring book and you know was coloring it all black and then red when christ you know and and there's different tracks to kind of capture because what i'm trying to get to is that men oftentimes have deep questions of when it comes to their faith but they're scared to ask because they've been told just believe it but they're thinking it doesn't really make sense so what ends up happening is to be a good christian they keep showing up to church but they've lost they've kept their wonder and curiosity at the door and i feel like men today as Christian men, should be the most curious, have the most desire to learn, the most wondrous, would be to be comfortable with questioning everything and learning and growing. And how as Christian men can we recapture our young boy, curious, um, wonder minds of adventure and all these things? How do we recapture the the desire to understand how things work in the back ends of TVs and and cars, like or whether it's technology or even gaming, like how do we recapture that with our faith? And I think the future Christian man should have a curious faith, not just a faith that they're being told they should have. The second thing I thought about was that we should desire as Christian men to create safe families that as men that we should desire to create a table that our kids and wives can sit at, that we make available to difficult conversations about faith and we allow the table to be a safe space to have those conversations, that we should create a safe space for our children to be vulnerable, that we should create a safe space and that we will protect our families. Now, I'm not like every man has to own guns or every man has to start taking jujitsu. But I do believe that as a man, there's a job to create a safety for your family. So if that means getting set up and having some type of weapon or that's safely put away and locked behind a case if need to be used, or that you have some type of self-defense skills, I don't think we should become men that just sit back and think someone else is going to do it for our family, that we should have a desire to create a safe family, both emotionally safe family and a physically safe family. Moving on, I feel like as men, we should desire fitness, but in particular, I thought not just fitness, but I feel like Christian men should be adventure fit. And adventure fit means you're not the fastest, you don't have all, you don't have, to have all the abs, might be nice if you do, but as men for our families, we should be adventure fit, meaning that we should always be able to get up and go with our kids, that our fitness level should never hold our family back from experiencing things, trying things, going out and um, serving and helping people, that if we have a level of adventure fitness in our lives because we're active with the right hobbies and things that keep us healthy and fit, then it gives us the ability to be there for our families when we get home from work and we have a dinner and our kid wants to play basketball. We're not like, oh, I'm too tired. We can get up and go. That we, we, As a dads, we would never have to say no to our kids to any type of adventure. And as men, I think there's a value to doing things together in adventure with the purpose of gaining fitness and doing it. So I think we should have curious faith, create safe families, grow in adventure fitness. And lastly, I think men should and this is the hardest thing for us, but that we should seek generous finances, meaning that we should desire as men, as hard as it is, because we oftentimes carry the pressure of providing or doing our best to set ourselves up to provide if we're not having a family yet, or we desire to provide for girlfriends or provide for fiancés or even our families. But I think people already assume that wives, sisters, mothers, grandmothers are the most generous. But I think men need to start stepping into that role more. 
I think we need to start stepping into the role of being generous, modeling generosity. After all, the picture we get of ultimate generosity is Christ's willingness to give his life for us as a man, that he was willing to lay down his life, that he was so generous he gave of himself to give us something that was priceless. So what does it look like to combat toxic masculinity with biblical masculinity, meaning that we walk with curious faith, desire safe family, are always working towards adventure fitness and desire to be generous in our finances. And I feel like those are some kind of kind of pillars for biblical masculinity. Uh, in my mind, I'm thinking, man, this this is the kind of stuff that would be rad to get like a couple, a bunch of guys together and like go up to a house in the mountains and like fish and hang out together and work through these things. Because I think we need to become the people in the world right now that bring hope. And the only way to bring hope into the world right now is to live a different story. And I feel like we shouldn't just yell at things like toxic masculinity. I feel like we should like step up and show true masculinity. And that we shouldn't just fall down to walk culture and just kind of be like, well, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to make anybody mad at me. But no, we should stand up to woke culture, but to show it something more beautiful, to show it something more um, attractive, to show it something better fit for people. And someone needs to do it. I'm not saying I need to do it. I'm not saying... I should be the one to do it, but I know that in my life, this is what I've been trying to be conscious of. How can I live these pillars in my manhood for my family with wisdom and uh, and set a model for biblical, healthy masculinity uh, to those that are around me, to those that are, um, you know, desiring to know, like, how do I be a man in this new culture without offending people? Well, here's the first thing. You're going to offend someone all the time. And if you don't think you are, you probably are offending someone right now. But uh, that's just the the nature of where we are. But I think we need to begin as men to step up in these categories and model biblical masculinity. All right. Well, I'm almost done. I want to leave you one last thought. I posted on my social media two days ago a sticky note that I had written for myself about four years ago that has really set the framework for the last four years, especially all we've gone through with COVID and everything else. It's kind of set the framework for me to continue to move forward with joy. And it was these four words, be humble, stay positive. And I realized if I could keep reminding myself to be humble and stay positive, that it would help me get through any of the difficult situations, whether it was deciding what to say in front of everyone at church on Sunday, when there's a protest going on, whether it's how to handle the situation with my children, whether it's how to deal with friends and other ministries and their ministries either falling apart or being more successful than my ministry. I realized these four words have helped me find joy in every situation. So I want to leave you with this to maybe be your own sticky note as well. Be humble, stay positive. Those four words, be humble, stay positive, I think it could become a motto for your life to find joy in whatever you're doing. Huh. Batman, toxic masculinity, and joy. How do those go together? I don't know, but it all works in the mind of Matt Whitlock. <laughs> and that's what this podcast is all about. So I thank you for listening once again to Capital Beach Church Faith Family. I'd encourage you to write in any questions you have on anything I've said, and please feel free to share our church podcast with anyone and everyone that you come in contact with. I think it's a good picture of our church and the things we believe and the things we hold true. Thank you all for the listening time or watching time. Bless you during the rest of your week.